Good morning. Welcome to Concord Baptist Church. We're glad to see you here this morning with us. And uh, we've got an exciting morning here at Concord as we hear from our El Salvador mission team. We have just one announcement for you. Uh, tonight, the adults will be uh, watching End of the Spear. Um, is that right? The adults and the kids are still going to be... We're going to have our own thing going. We're going to have music practice and then watch something with the kids as well. Uh, but the adults will be in the fellowship hall at 5.30 uh, to watch End of the Spear, and they'll have popcorn and drink for you for that. And other than that, we have no announcements. Again, we're happy to have you here at Concord, and we're excited to see what the Lord does today through the testimony of the mission team. Bow with me in prayer. Father God, we just come to you, God, and we just thank you so much. We thank you for being here with us. We thank you for being present. Lord, we thank you for the promises of the Bible that we, that we can rely on, Lord, because those words are your words. So, God, we know, that we know them to be true. We're just so thankful, God, for everything in our lives that you bless us with. God, we're thankful that you chose us to love. And, God, we're just thankful to be here today. Just let everything we say, do, and sing be to the glory of your kingdom. It's in Jesus' name that I pray. Amen. Matthew 28, 19, and 20. Therefore, go and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Teach these new disciples to obey all the commands I have given you. And be sure of this, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Stand with me as we sing. I love to tell a story. We'll sing two verses. And then stay up after that as we sing Set a Fire. I love to tell the story of unseen things above, of Jesus and his glory, of Jesus and his love. I love to tell the story because I know tis true. It satisfies my longings as nothing else can do. I love to tell the story, twill be my theme in glory to tell the old, old story of Jesus and his love. story for those who know it best seem hungering and thirsting to hear it like the rest and when in scenes of glory I sing a new new song it'll be the old story that I have loved so long. I love to tell the story, twill be my theme in glory, to tell the old, old story of Jesus and his love. Remain still.
set a fire down in my soul that I can't contain and I can't control. I want more of you, God. I want more of you, God. Set a fire down in my soul that I can't contain and I can't control. I want more of you, God. I want more of you, God. Set a fire down in my soul that I can't contain and I can't control. I want more of you, God. I want more of you, God. Set a fire down in my soul that I can't contain and I can't control. I want more of you, God. I want more of you, God. No place I'd rather be. No place I'd rather be. No place I'd rather be. And here in your love, here in your love, no place I'd rather be, no place I'd rather be, no place I'd rather be, than here in your love, here in your love, set a fire down in my soul that I can't contain and I can't control, I want more of you, God. I want more of you, God. Set a fire down in my soul that I can't contain and I can't control. I want more of you, God. I want more of you, God. No place I'd rather be. No place I'd rather be. No place I'd rather be. And here in your love, here in your love, no place I'd rather be. No, no place I'd rather be. No place I'd rather be than here in your love, here in your love. Set a fire down in my soul that I can't contain and I can't control. I want more of you, God. I want more of you, God. Set a fire down in my soul that I can't contain and I can't control. I want more of you, God. I want more of you, God. My prayer for you this morning is that you invite God into your heart. And that if you have him there already, that you ask him to be present every day and every moment of your life. He's there. He's just wanting you to reach out to him. Let him guide you. Let him lead you. Let him set that fire in your life so other people can see it. Other people can be warmed by it. The world needs us so much as Christians because they need God. And we're the only way most of them are going to see. So please be, let him be present in your life. Let him shine his light through you. Amen. Thank you for that, Brother Jamie. If you would, if anybody wants to join me at the altar, more welcome, more welcome. Let's bow our heads. Dear Lord, thank you for staying. Thank you for letting us have another day of living, Lord. And Lord, just thank you for all the blessings you gave us. And Lord, just today as we're here to hear all the ways you touched the people that went to El Salvador. Lord, I thank you for that. I thank you for the way that you touched them, changed their lives, and just the way that you come down and just walk with them. Lord, this today as they speak, that every word that they are spoken, that we use their stories to go out and spread your love, the, how they spread your love, Lord. And Lord, I pray that you come down with, y'all, with your healing hand and touch all the sick, all the suffering, and especially all the lost, Lord. That you just grab them up and let them know that you're there, that your presence is always with them. And Lord, I love you, and I'll always praise you. Amen.
as I thought about this morning uh, and the people of El Salvador that were being, mis- that were being uh, ministered to, um, all I could think about is how thirsty I would be if the only water I had to drink was from a cow trough or a cow's bathroom for that matter. I think about how picky I am that most of the time I won't drink water and that I want a soda or a big old sweet tea. And I think about these people that are drinking mud. And all I could think of is this song and uh, what it means to me to know that with Christ in my life, I, I don't have to be thirsty. And it doesn't matter. The people of El Salvador, if they haven't gotten these filters, but they got Christ, they're not thirsty in the most important way. If they've got Christ, they're satisfied. And so that's what this song is about. heart of stone so turn it into flesh spirit soften it I give you all I have I'm holding nothing back Jesus I am yours Jesus I am yours take all soften it I give you all I have I'm holding nothing back Jesus I am yours Jesus I am yours take over lover of my soul Take control, I surrender, there's nothing I want more than to know you, Lord. What am I supposed to do with all my kingdoms next to you? 
You're the Lord. You're the Lord. I could gain this world and more. It's all nothing next to you. My reward. My reward. What am I supposed to do with all my kings? next to you. You're the Lord. You're the Lord. I could gain the world and more. It's all nothing next to you. My reward. My reward. Take And to know you, Lord, what am I supposed to do with all my kingdoms next to you? You're the Lord, you're the Lord. I could gain this world and more. It's all nothing next to you. My To know you, Lord, to know you, so much. Well, good morning. It is uh, certainly good to see everyone this morning. Good to be in the Lord's house. Amen. Amen. To be able to worship Him, to praise His name, to magnify and glorify Him. Um, we've got an exciting uh, some, uh, special opportunity this morning to, uh, to hear from our mission team. Um, we're going to share about uh, what God did in El Salvador and how he worked in the people of El Salvador and also how he worked in our lives. And we pray that that's testimony to uh, all of us as well. Um, but one of the things that we're going to be sharing is why we go, why we go on mission. Back in the summer of 2021, we learned um, about this ministry called Filter of Hope. Now, we, we shared with you a demonstration of how a water filter worked and how uh, this organization was sending water filters into towns and villages for people who, who most of them don't have clean water access. And so families were, were living in poverty. Families are living in poverty and they deserve access to clean water like you and I, right? We can just go and we can turn on the faucet and have a nice drink of water. We can turn on the shower and it's nice clean water. We can brush our teeth and not have to worry about getting sick from the water that we brush our teeth with. We have such a convenience of being able to just turn a knob where many people don't. And if they do have the access of just being able to turn a knob, the water that they receive may not be completely pure, may not be completely clean. So motivated by compassion of Christ, Filter of Hope uh, brings clean water to people who are thirsty. 
by manufacturing and distributing just simple, life-saving water filters. They provide families living in poverty easy access to clean, safe drinking water. Now, we took these filters, and each one of these individual filters that we took uh, to El Salvador filters 250 gallons a day, and they should last 10 years as long as they clean these filters every day that they decide to use it. Now, uh, these, these filters, they fit in just a quart-sized bag, you know, just a small bag, and they cost just over $40 to purchase. You, church, you, you were a part of sending filters for people in need. This church and uh, people, the church of Pleasant City in Shelby, they helped as well. You helped the kids raise money at VBS, along with uh, the VBS donations at Pleasant City Church as well, uh, there, was, there was enough money for us to take and distribute 74 filters and Bibles in El Salvador. So that's what we took. So we've got just uh, a couple of brief thank you videos from people in El Salvador who have received filters. And these videos uh, are from two people who received a filter in the town that we served in. So, Jeff, if you'll leave my microphone on during this video, I'm going to be sharing just a, a, a little bit as it's played. But if you'll play those two videos that are thank yous. And children, if you're in the room and you were a part of the Vacation Bible School, this is a thank you to you as well because you were a part of uh, raising the funds to take these filters to people. Bueno, eh, darle gracias a Dios primero por like poner ese impulso en el corazón de los niños, velar por los demás niños de, de, de bueno, de los, eh, darle gracias a Dios primero por poner ese impulso en el corazón de los niños, velar por los demás niños de, 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 de los, así como países del Salvador. Eso a mí me motiva para poder eh, eh, lograr a los niños. Eh, este, fomentar eso con los niños de, de mi comunidad, porque así como ellos lo han logrado, con esfuerzo lo podemos lograr a los niños más necesitados que nosotros tenemos. Eh, por ejemplo, en Gladys, mi mano derecha, en el equipo de trabajo de la comunidad, y hablamos del tema. Porque nosotros también tenemos un sueño con la niñez. Que agradecemos mucho a estos niños que los están aportando los filtros, porque pues... A través de ellos, los niños de nosotros van a tener mejor salud a través de los filtros. Así que pedirle a Dios también que les dé salud, fuerzas y más sabiduría para que sigan apoyando a otras comunidades. Eh, quizás decirles gracias, niños, por el esfuerzo. Hello, good morning, children of God. May God bless you. I want to thank you so much because God has touched your heart to give us this blessing. I personally feel very blessed. God will bless your beautiful little hearts. Little in size, but big for the Lord. I don't have anything to pay you back, but the Lord does. He will bless you for all that you're doing, not just for me, but for everyone in this community. May God bless your lives. Everything that we saw we will reap in the future. Because you are good children and servants of God, you will be blessed. Thank you very much. May God bless you.
like musical chairs here, wherever, it don't matter. <laughs> so kids that was a, a thank you uh, for the efforts that you made um, through VPS to ra raise money for uh, the filters and those of you adults who also donated as well uh, that was a thank you because you're making a difference in the lives of those people for most families receiving a water filter means that they have clean water in their homes for the very first time ever. The, uh, the town that we were able to deliver filters to, they had been waiting for filters for two years prior to COVID. And uh, it, it, God just worked it out for us to be there, so we just praise him for that. In 2012, they distributed the first Filter of Hope water filters in the Dominican Republic. And since then, they have expanded to 10 additional countries in the Caribbean and Central America, and their partnership uh, organizations, or their, their partnership organizations have taken water filters to more than 55 countries worldwide. So, we were, um, we were praying uh, back, in, back in the summer. We came across this organization, Filters of Hope, and we began praying uh, how God can use us to raise filters, and little did we know that this Vacation Bible School project would turn into a mission trip. We, we didn't really have that in plan, but God opened up a door for us to plan a trip with them, and the plan was to go to Guatemala. Uh, that's why all of our shirts, if you look at our shirts, they say, bringing hope to Guatemala, <laughs> and, and you may be thinking, well, that, that's weird. Well, up until uh, just a, a a couple of days before Christmas, yeah, it was Christmas Eve, we, we were planning to go to Guatemala. We were planning to take filters of hope to Guatemala. Um, but, and, and through that, God opened up a door for some friends to be a part of our trip. Um, you may not recognize all the faces up here, but uh, a few faces you may not recognize. We have Tierney down here on the left, and her mother, Pat, and... Uh, Caitlin, which is Tierney's daughter, she's here as well. Um, there were some friends of us, and they were able to become part of our trip to go to Guatemala. But God had some different plans for us, and he, he called for some great trust in him, didn't he? Um, he called us to trust his plan. So he opened up a door for us to go to El Salvador, and then we had a decision to make. We had to begin praying God, are you wanting us to go to El Salvador? Are you wanting us to go to Guatemala? Are you telling us only half the team needs to go? Uh, are you telling us we need to stay here? And all these things began rolling around in our heads, and we began praying. And I know that um, it, it even the decision was even more difficult for uh, Caitlin and uh, her mother, Tierney, and Pat. And I'm going to let them share a little bit about that as well, and how God worked in their lives on the trip. Um, so the reason that me and my mom and mama are even here is because of my relationship with Maddie. So Maddie had known that I wanted to go to Guatemala since I was in the third grade when I heard about um, someone going to Guatemala on a mission trip. And so I still haven't been able to go on to go um, after seven years of trying. And so Maddie called me, and she was like, hey, you want to go to Guatemala? And I was like, uh, yeah. And so that's kind of the whole reason we're even here. So. Yeah, and um, even while the trip was still supposed to be to Guatemala, um, my stepmom had gotten um, really sick, and um, her health had really been getting a lot worse since Thanksgiving. And we just weren't real sure that we were supposed to be leaving right now. And um, she did end up passing away on New Year's Day, which is exactly one week from when we were supposed to leave. And so even that didn't really answer our question about whether we were supposed to still go. Because, um, well, if you've ever cared for someone who was passing away, you're tired <laughs> physically, emotionally. And um, we just weren't sure that we should leave. 
and we went to the funeral on that Wednesday, and um, they kept, the pastor kept sharing about how since she had come to know Christ three years ago, that my stepmom had just shared that with everyone, and that in the hospital, um, in her sickness, that she had been able to really um, share that, and when Caitlin and I left the funeral, we just kind of looked at each other, and we were like, okay, this might be the least prepared that we have ever been when we were leaving for our mission trip, but we should go. She would want us to still go. And um, when I said that to Caitlin, it's funny how your kids teach you a lot. <laughs> Caitlin said, maybe that's why we're going without being prepared, because God wants to make sure that we know it's his words coming out of our mouth and not ours, that we hadn't taken time to prepare and study, but that anything that we would say would actually be his, and we would know that we were giving him all the glory. And um, I don't know if I'm supposed to share this part right now or not. But, uh, <laughs> but even when we got there, it God really does direct our paths. The Bible says that, but until you actually step out in faith and experience it, it's kind of strange. But um, while we were there, I think like the second day we were there, we met a lady who was caring for her mom who was passing away like in the next few days probably. It's good, and um, we were, I was able to stand there with the help of an interpreter, because I don't know any Spanish, and um, really talk to her about how I understood what she was going through, and how I could relate to, you know, exactly what she was experiencing, but also to be able to tell her that we were able to celebrate once Beth passed away, that we knew where she was and we knew we would see her again and she had that same assurance so that's um her that she had that same assurance that her mom was a believer and um we were able to gather around her i couldn't pray i was slightly emotional but hannah did <laughs> and um pray over the mom um some people from the community were there praying and when we left caitlin said it felt like we were at, at um mom all the best um, because that's exactly what it had felt like too and so it's just amazing how God really takes what you're going through and sometimes you're able to see how he can use that later yeah. and I know we've got some we've got some pictures of um, you guys praying over the grandmother here in just a little while we'll, we'll share that um, but Tyranny's mother your mother, Pat, got to also go with us as well. Uh, we called her Mom All Pat. And uh, what, what was it like getting to go with your daughter uh, and your granddaughter? And, and how did you see God work in this trip? And, and I know um, as we're going through here, we've got some pictures of uh, each person that's talking. We've got some pictures of them uh, sharing and doing ministry together. And uh, those of you that are watching online, I think James has got those rolling uh, back there as well for the PowerPoint. You can just, if you can just kind of follow along the best you can uh, as we share, just share the pictures of what, what we're talking about. Um, they should mostly be in order, so um, if we need to back you up, we will. Go ahead, Pat, share, share how, what it was like going with your family and how God worked in your life on the trip. Well, it's wonderful going with your daughter and seeing God work in her heart and seeing what she does for God but it's even warms my heart to see my granddaughter doing it. And I hope God uses her the rest of her life, and I'm sorry I'm crying. Right. <laughs> but the first few days, I wouldn't talk. I wouldn't pray out loud. I wouldn't give my testimony even when I was asked. But one night I t was talking to God, and he told me I need to that he would be with me and that he would help me and show me what to say. So after that, I did. I gave my testimony a couple of times, and I talked a little bit doing the filter and stuff. But, I mean, God just taught me that he's always with you. All you have to do is ask. So um, we were so glad that your family 
got to be a part of this trip together. And, and from the very beginning, we were one team. You know, it, it wasn't Concord and Pleasant City. It, it, we just felt like one family uh, that, was, that was going, and that was, that was awesome. Um, so, so on our way to uh, El Salvador, I, I have to train my brain not to say Guatemala because we, we, said, <laughs> we said Guatemala for so long, and, and we trained, prepared, and prayed for Guatemala, and then boom, two weeks before the trip uh, happened, everything changed. Um, and, and even at that, if, if we were to write out a list of uh, why God changed everything for us to go to El Salvador, we would have a list a mile long. And, and I know some um, probably, you know, maybe even some here said, well, maybe y'all shouldn't just go. Maybe you should not go. Maybe uh, God's telling you you shouldn't go. Maybe you shouldn't because of COVID. And there was just, just so many things that were wrestling in our hearts and minds. Um, pause right there just a minute, guys, on the, on the pictures. If you can go back a little bit to where uh, it shows El Salvador. Um, on the way, our faithfulness to Christ was even still put on trial because while we were on the way to the airport, <laughs> Joseph, uh, we'll, we'll get that in a minute, but jo Joseph uh, finds out that our, our flight had been canceled. Okay, so while we were on the way to the airport, well, actually, Joseph, you found out the night before, right? Yeah, I did. But I, I got pretty clear about that. Okay, all right. Well, um, I'll, I'll let you share that in a minute. But we, he found out the night before, but uh, failed to tell us um, because because he thought I knew. Yeah, granted, I'll give him that. But we find out on the way to the airport that our flight has been canceled, and um, so they were splitting our team up. And they had uh, Kelly and Joseph and then Tierney and Caitlin all going, routing through Miami. And they had the rest of us routing through Dallas. So they, they weren't even, we weren't even going to the same uh, airport transition stop. Um, so we, we were kind of torn because they had a long layover uh, there. How long was it? 12 hours. 12, 12 hours in Miami, so while they were there, Joseph, you know, he, he knew the sights, so he took them around. <laughs> he may tell you about that in a minute, but um, they, so they, they spent uh, 12 hours in Miami and then eventually made it there. Once we got there, at, at 1 a.m., yeah, Joseph says 1 a.m., we got there about uh, 2, 2 or something, 2 or 3, and then the rest of the team got there at 1 a.m., but once we got there, God just worked out everything, and everything went really smooth. But up until that point, it required so much trust uh, of Christ. I know um, Bobby and Sharon, they were supposed to go with us as well. And, man, our, our hearts were broken when uh, Bobby had tested positive for COVID and couldn't go with us, and Sharon you know, needed to look after him as well. Our hearts were broken that, that they couldn't go with us, but we just continued. We, tried to, we just needed to trust God. That, that he knew best, and Bobby and Sharon were doing that, and we were trying to do that, and <clears throat> on my way to to get the van that morning, we left at 2 a.m. from here, or two or three, um, on my way to get the van here to pick up the, the rest of the team, uh, God just really gave a, a peace over me uh, to know that Bobby and Sharon were doing, they were right where God wanted them, regardless of the fact that, that Bobby was sick, they were going to be our number one prayer warriors. And that was their role for this trip. And I know that they were praying beyond a shadow of a doubt, along with many of you guys as well. But they, God just, just assured us that we were going to need them to pray for us on this trip. And so I know they were doing that as we were praying for them. Um, so once we finally got there, we stayed in a place called Surf City or El Tunco. You can see where El Salvador is, and then uh, there's a little dot on the map there. It's on the coast of the Pacific Ocean uh, is where we were. It was about 40 minutes from the town where we did ministry in uh, a place called Santa Cruz. And as I shared with you, Santa Cruz had been waiting on filters for two years. Uh, El Tunco is where we stayed, where we ate, where we based... Uh, the, the church that we were based out of, it was there. 
Um, it was called Lored. I think we have a picture of Lored. Uh, this was a church that was started to reach the surfers for Christ. Uh, because this is a town uh, that is worldwide known for surfing. Um, so a lot of the surfers, they, they began reaching out to them uh, in order to share Christ with them. And so this church, uh, you'll see some pictures of a surfboard uh, standing up, and it, there's a sign that says the red. And they actually made a, a podium, like a, a, the podium for the pastor to stand and preach at. It's got a surfboard on the front. There, you can see it there, the, the, the little one, uh, the little surfboard. So they used that to reach the surfers for Christ, and they use surfing as a way to do outreach, and um, Lored is actually, uh, it means the net, and basically they use that play off of words um, twofold, because there's a network of churches, uh, but it's also, you know, we're called to be fishers of men, right, and so they throw the net out, uh, throw the net out to others, in order to reach them for Christ. But Santa Cruz, where we did ministry, it was a, a town that basically um, very, very poor town. Um, most of the people live there live off of less than $2 a day. So let that sink in for a moment. They're living on less than $2 a day. We spend more, more than that at lunch. So one of our visions here at Concord um, was for each uh, that we send each member of our church who feels led to go on their first foreign mission trip for free. And you may say, well, well why is that part of Concord's vision? Why is that something that we do? Well, it's, it's because when you go on a mission like this or, or a mission uh, similar to this, it's very eye-opening, and it's heart-changing. Would you guys agree? And uh, we had three of, uh, three of our team members this year. This was their very first foreign mission trip. Uh, Hannah Grubb, she wasn't able to be here with us this morning. Um, she's not feeling well, so we pray for her. Uh, but Kelly and Joseph, this was your first foreign mission trip, right? Um, why don't you guys tell a little bit about that Um and how God worked and shaped you and, and how perhaps he grew you uh, through this trip. <clears throat> well, I feel closer to God after the mission trip. I feel it's eye-opening because of um, the conditions they live in is very different than conditions he only live in. Just with how their houses look, with made out of sheet metal, and how the falls a door, and how uh, they drink water and just how they have a completely different religion than we do in the U.S. But it also is a little more nervous for me um, because I was away from mom and dad, uh, far away. They couldn't easily come and get me if I needed something. So it was a little nervous, and then I was nervous a little bit in the airport because I never flown without my parents, you know, and I was also nervous because we had a letter that said Travis could take me, and Travis couldn't be with me, so I was afraid, oh no, what's going to happen? Are they going to keep me? Are they not going to let me go? <laughs> um, because they had, they, cause he had a letter. But um, Tony, as my mission trip mom, she kept, me, she kept me safe, secure, and she helped me do everything. So I thank her for that, and I thank mom all too. Well, with me, it's just kind of very eye-opening, and, and just even hearing the translators, some of them, hearing how they were persecuted down there even a little bit. Like, one of the, Susie, she was talking about how her godparents didn't want nothing to do with her after she came to Christ. And Manny, he was one who said his dad wanted nothing to do with him after receiving Christ. And it's just kind of eye-opening how easy we have it up here sharing Christ, and we think we're persecuted, but we don't know what the level of persecution and even sharing their faith down there with others and what they go on through on a daily basis. And just me, it's like even down there, going down there, it's like I wasn't sure what my purpose was. And then hearing Manny 
talk about how he wants to go on missions, and he's like this 20-year-old kid, and it's just kind of, that just kind of resonated with me. It's just kind of, I shouldn't let the fear keep me from going, and I should just go out and go when God wants me to do, and I was like, even telling them, like, even the second day I was there, it's like, I, I knew, I was like, I want to go back to El Salvador and go to other places on missions and just go and I let fear hold me back. Well, this, um, I know this, this trip was life-changing for you guys, and it was for Hannah as well, and I know she'll, uh, she'll have plenty to say another time. Um, <laughs> what are you guys laughing at? We, we love Hannah. Um, <laughs> So we'll, we'll let her share uh, another time, but um, we continue to pray for her. But I know you guys had a, a wonderful time, and God, and you, you just get a chance to ask them about their trip, and they've got lots of stories and lots of things they can share with you. Um, and, and I know there was a, the, so this was their first mission trip, the first time experience, but there was uh, another first time experience um, that basically uh, was the highlight of the trip for Maddie and Caitlin. Um, you guys want to tell a little bit about that experience? Okay. Um, <laughs> so there's a picture of. Um, if, you can go, if you can go back a little bit, there's a picture okay. of. It's like a blue. A house. blue wall in the background, and it's a family with a little boy, and then another lady. It's two filter pictures. Not that. Sorry, that's the school. That. that yes, yeah. Yes. That. Um, so we were at this family's house, and the lady is their neighbor, but she went also to get a filter. And me and Maddie kind of went back and forth on sharing the gospel presentation, using the filter to demonstrate how it relates to our lives. And um, at this specific house, um, we didn't plan on sharing our testimonies with it because it was adults. And um, we felt like we didn't relate our testimonies as much to adults. And um, because we're teenagers and we got saved as a kid and so we didn't feel like we were related to adults as much with our testimonies. So we had it planned on sharing it. And then, and then it just like happened. Like we just started talking, I guess. I had no idea what was coming out my mouth. Like afterwards, I went over to Caitlin and I said, I really screwed that up. I have no idea what I just said. It made no sense. <laughs> but... Um, so it was definitely a God thing, but we um, led those three people to Christ for uh, the first time. The man and the two ladies, they um, got saved, and it was a big thing for me because I was able to see that my story and my testimony can impact adults' lives too, and not just kids. Um, because I always tend to go towards kids and share with kids because I feel like I relate to them more. And so it was a big thing seeing that my story can relate to adults too. This is awesome. Um, this, was, this was one of my favorite moments, um, perhaps uh, a highlight for, for everyone even, was just seeing the excitement in these two when they came to tell us. I mean, there was rejoicing, there was jumping up and down, there was squeals, you know. Uh, we were walking on the road on the way there, and um, we were on the app, the Filter of Hope app, you're able to put if they were already a believer or if they accepted or not. And so we were able to click, yes, they accepted for the first time. And we just kind of screamed on the road. <laughs> and um, the translator, he looks over and goes, is everything okay? And we're like, yeah, it's all good. <laughs> yeah, there was, it, it was awesome when you see the light bulb come on, that, that God can use them on mission as well, that Christ can use their story for his glory, for them to actually see that and recognize that, you know, uh, not just for kids, but for adults as well. Um, that was that was perhaps one of my highlights. I know anyone want to add to any of that? And Caroline even added that night when we each night we would have like a group kind of share time, just what what God had taught us throughout the day and things like that. And even Caroline that night, she had said, 
when they jumped and they, because we were all split up into different groups, so when they came in that day to lunch to just tell us, they just ran in with just so much excitement and just leaping and just rejoicing. And, of course, we all rejoiced with them. And Caroline said, when they were jumping, it reminded me of when John the Baptist leapt in his mama's belly when Mary walked in with Jesus because they had just experienced Jesus for this first time. And so for even for her, that was just kind of this, and we were all like, whoa, when she said that. But <laughs> it's right. It was there. right. They were rejoicing, and we all rejoiced, and heavens rejoiced and leapt and celebrated because those three souls gave their life to Christ. Another highlight was uh, seeing not just God use the teens, but my, my youngest kids as well for, for different roles. Um, they all played a, a, a part in the mission trip. And, um, you know, some of you may wonder, well, well man, why are, why are we sending these, these younger ones on mission? What can they actually do? Um, let me assure you, uh, these kids raised their, their money to go on this trip so on their own. And they uh, love to go and go on mission uh, and share Christ. And I see them every time we go. Um, God use them in different ways. And, and I've seen how inspiring it is to other people. Even the, the translator was telling us just how, how inspiring it was to see a family go on mission. Because uh, it inspires them to take their families on mission, their kids, to raise them in missions. Um, so I'm thankful for that, but uh, these two, Caroline and Ella, they also played a role in this, and um, Ella, Ella had a highlight of the trip as well. You want to share about that, Ella, and what God taught you, and there's some, wait, don't play the video yet. Uh, go back to the pictures of Ella and Caroline doing missions, if you will. Go ahead, Ella. Ella had a highlight when she was playing with the kids while we were installing the filters. Say it one more time. I don't think the microphone is on. One of my favorite parts was playing with the kids while we were installing the filters. Yeah, there's just some pictures of her, her doing that, and she took on the role of, of caretaker for the kids and things whenever we were uh, sharing with some of the adults as well. And uh, you as well put some of the filters together, didn't you, Ella? And and Caroline did too. Caroline uh, was determined. You you want to tell them what you did? I drilled the holes. She drilled the holes. She drilled the holes. So the buckets, she would she would use this hand drill, and man, she would crank down on those things, and uh, she would not give up. She worked hard on them. She even got hot in one house and she took off her hat and just you know she she wasn't gonna have any help, but she was gonna get it done. So she drilled a lot of the holes that were in the buckets that we installed the filters for, and we like I said, we installed about 74 filters. All right. Um, Hana, you also faced some challenges unexpected on this trip uh, that you didn't, you weren't really ready for, but I, I know the team came together to fill uh, some different roles, which is a prime example of how the body of Christ comes together and, and fills roles. Uh, tell a little bit about how that, what happened there and how you saw God work in the trip. Yeah. So I learned a long time ago that um, God has me and that no matter what weirdness is going on with my body, that he has me under control and that he has the situ situation under control. So I'm okay and I just have to keep moving. So day one, <laughs> we wake up that morning and I keep thinking Travis has my contacts in because I could not see and I could not see a thing. And so the whole day, and I, my body's just trembling, and I'm shaking the whole day. And so we go out, and I didn't say anything because I thought, well, it's just another one of my weirdnesses, you know, that's happening. And so I'm okay. Maybe my medicine's going to click in, and I'll settle down a little bit. But it never did, and I could not see. And so when it got to the, the first house, and I was supposed to enter in the filter, I was like, Somebody else has got to do this. And so, like, I was able just to hand my phone off in each house, and somebody was able to just take that over. And I just knew that God had me, and it was okay. And, you know, 
the scripture tells us to hide his words in our heart so that we'll know it. And I am thankful that God, just like how you say, you open your mouth and something comes out, that he can do that. Because <laughs> when I shared the, my role kind of in each home, I would always say, if you are willing to share the gospel, if you want to do this part, do it. I wanted to encourage every person to do it. If you don't, that's fine. I can step in and I can feel a role wherever. I was kind of that encourager. I would just fill in the fill in wherever I needed to or just wrap it up and close it up. And so when it would come to share the gospel and to share the scripture, I couldn't see my Bible. And so I would just open it and good thing the translator was there to read it in Spanish. And so but if I didn't have scripture hidden in my heart, I wouldn't have known what to say. But God was able to provide the words and provide mouth, and I just had to be that vessel, just to open my mouth and be willing to speak and to be willing to love, and he provided. And so he showed the way. The whole week I couldn't see, but it's all right. She has on a green shirt. There's a, uh, there's a picture with our family, and then there's a picture with just her. So there was this lady in one of the homes that we talked to, and this lady shared her testimony with us. We always gave the opportunity, especially if it was a believer in the home, to where we just really communed and fellowshiped and spent time together and heard their stories, not just us speaking the whole time, because we aren't there just to make our impression and our presence known in their home. We are there to be with them and create fellowship and community and be the church as one body. And so in this home, she was a believer. She was the only believer in her home. And so we gave her the opportunity to share her testimony. And when she did, she told us about how she has a heart condition. And to some here, a heart condition isn't really that big a deal because you can take medicine. If something happens, you are close to the hospital, you can get the help. There, you don't. They have this health coordinator in the village. He's not a doctor. He's not a nurse. And so she's not going to get the medical attention she needs. I mean, people are dying every single day of kidney and diabetes because they don't have the medical attention they need. But this lady, that lady there in the green, she shared her testimony, and she has a heart condition. And when she found out about that heart condition, um, it actually brought her to Christ. She was not a believer before, but she learned that God was in control and that God gives her every single day as a gift. And so that she needs to use that day, that moment, as worship and to honor him and to point others to him. And so every single day, she lives her days like it is her last because it most certainly could be. The doctor said that she could die at any moment, and she wants to use every single breath to honor God. And she gave us each a little, a little trinket that she had made, and it's a turtle. And she had found seeds, these big seeds, and I meant to bring it, and some shells, and she put it together and gave it to each of our team as a thank you. Yeah, there's a picture of her holding it as a thank you for us coming, just a thank you for our presence for being there, not just for, for bringing water filters, because that's going to make a difference in their life and their health, but just for our presence of being there, of our community, of our love and our prayers, just as a thank you. She gave us this, and I told her that I would put it on my mantle and on my shelf, and I have, and every time I see it, and I had encouraged the team to do it as well, every time I'd see it, I would pray for her. And I would use it as that prayer reminder to pray for her and to, to be an inspiration to me to use my life, to use my breath, to use my minutes to honor him and to point others to him. So we went there uh, and, and there were multiple times when people would inspire us. Wouldn't you agree? Uh, we, you know, we went to share the gospel. We went to share filters. But... Many times people would be uh, in, inspiring to us from, from being on multiple trips. Many might say uh, or, or many might even think, well, aren't your efforts better used uh, just sending money? 
there? Can't, what, shouldn't you just, wouldn't our efforts be, our efforts and resources just be better used if we just sent money there for filters? And, um, you know, while this is true for some ministries, uh, for this one, we were actually taking the filters there. Uh, we had raised the filters, and we were part of the distribution and the installation. Uh, so they needed people. You know, the Bible tells us that the, the labor is plentiful, but the workers are few. Amen? And so when you go on these trips, it, it changes not only the people there, uh, but it, it's inspiring and changes your heart, where whenever you come back, into your local town, your local school, your, your local neighborhood, your workplace, you are even more inspired to share the gospel here now that you have been there. And I think God directs us and, and moves us to go. Go to the nations. Go to your, your Judea, your Samaria, your Jerusalem, to the ends of the earth. Go because he wants us to have a, a biblical worldview of his love for all people. You know, the person here who is lost that you work with or that's across the street who needs Jesus, that person needs Jesus just as much as the person in El Salvador. Amen? There's no reason that the people here need Jesus or deserve Jesus more than the people there. And so he calls us to go. Who will go? Why do we go? Shouldn't we go? The answer is yes, we should. There was a family that Joseph and I visited, um, and you can scroll on over to that. It's towards the end. Um, and we shared with them the gospel message. And while some of the families uh, were competent in their faith and competent what Christ did on the cross, that only the salvation could only come through Jesus, only Jesus can save, there was a man and a woman uh, that, that we went and saw, I think it was maybe our first or second day. And um, they, they were assured of their salvation. They knew their salvation. Yeah, that's them there. Um, they had just such a, a peace about them as we shared the gospel with them. But at the same time, she had a, a condition uh, that she faced, a disease with her ovaries, and they asked for prayer. And so I, I told them we would love to take a picture of them so that our church body can be praying for this lady. Uh, and I, I can't remember her name. Do you remember, Joseph? Okay. But um, this lady, they were going to be seeing some doctors and trying to figure out what was going on, but she has a, a disease in her ovaries. So I just ask you to be in prayer for her. And the final picture I want to share with you is a picture of three ladies. Um, I want to specifically ask you to pray for them. It's, I think it's the next one. Um, these ladies were content with their lives. You remember that home tyranny? They were, uh, had no assurance of salvation, no hope. Their, face, their fate was based upon themselves and what they can do to earn salvation. There was just such a coldness in the home because they were lost. So we share the gospel, we present it to them, and many times we think, well, our job is to convince them to find Jesus, to convince them to surrender to Jesus. And the truth is, that's not our calling. Our calling is to share the message, to share Christ, and then let the Holy Spirit do His work. But one of the hardest things that we had to do was leave that home, knowing that they, they weren't interested right now. They thanked us for the filters, and one of them may have even said they would think about it, what we said. But the seed was planted, and we just had to leave it there. Paul says in Titus chapter 3, verses 4 through 7, it says, When the kindness and love of God our Savior appeared, He saved us, not because of righteous things we had done, but because of His mercy. He saved us through the washing of rebirth and renewal by the Holy Spirit, whom He poured out on us generously through Jesus Christ our Savior, so that having been justified by His grace, we might become heirs, having the hope of eternal life. And then he goes on, even in Ephesians, to say, For it is by grace you have been saved through faith. This is not from yourselves. It is a gift of God, not by works, so that no one can boast. One of the things that we tried to emphasize while we were there, that, that 
grace and mercy and what Jesus Christ did on the cross is a gift. You don't have to earn a gift, do you? It's freely given. It is given by God. And that's what we were hoping and praying, that people would receive the free gift that Jesus did, that our salvation is not based upon what we do. Because many people, even today, even in here, here in America, they'll say, well, how do you, what will happen to you when you die? Well, it'll depend on whether or not I was good or whether or not I was bad. You know, God will weigh my deeds, uh, whether or not they're good or bad, and then he'll determine, he'll make judgment. Well, the fact of the matter is, Jesus can give you assurance and Jesus can give you a hope and a future right now. That you can have faith and you can have assurance of your salvation right now. That you don't have to wait until you die for judgment to come upon you. No, Jesus has already died in your place. He's already rose again for, as a sacrifice for my sin, for your sin. And it is a free gift. We can praise God that it is a free gift. Amen? Free in the sense that it cost us nothing, but it cost Him everything. He gave His life for us. And so that picture right there, I want you to pray for those three ladies and the, the many that we talked to. And they said, some told us, said, if, if we were to die today, we're going to hell. Some told us that they had assurance of their salvation, that they knew that they would be with Jesus because Jesus is their Lord. But others, they weren't sure. They didn't have hope. And so I ask, church, that you pray for them. And this, this last... Um, You know, we, we, can't, we can't place by any measure the hope of our salvation upon ourselves, can we? It is not in ourselves. We don't deserve it. We can only base it upon the gift of Jesus Christ and the sac His sacrifice for our salvation. So we're called to deliver this message. We're called to deliver the message of salvation to the world. This last video that um, Maddie put together for Filters of Hope, um, yeah, briefly tell them about uh, what role you had and what highlight you had there so another highlight of my trip was a couple of the days me and Caitlin got to go out with Manny I think there's a picture um, there is me and Caitlin and three long curly hair anyway we got to go out and take videos and pictures to be able to capture these moments and put together um, videos for Filter of Hope. Uh, Manny is one of the translators, but he was also a Filter of Hope videographer and photographer. So he took us out and he was able to teach us some things and show us some shots. And um, so with his help, we were able to go from their group to the other groups and take pictures and videos of different people. And um, so that's how you're able to see all of these videos come together. Video um, that Maddie put together for Filters of Hope. It, it lays out clear why we go, why we go on mission. So, um, team, y'all can y'all can be seated and um, give them a round of applause for how God used them. If you'll play that that final video for us, guys. Hey, hey, I'm hey, Maddie. I'm Maddie. And this is my family. These are my parents and my two little sisters, Ella and Caroline. We love going on missions as a family all around the world. And so do our friends. From what started out as a vacation Bible school project turned into We're going to El Salvador. But why do we go? Well, let us tell you. Lots of people all around the world don't have it as easy as we do.
When they need water, they walk to the river. Or if they're lucky enough to even have one, they'll go to the community well. But even that water isn't clean and to make them really sick. We quickly saw how much they needed these filters. And we had the opportunity to be welcomed into their homes to install it for them. Go we were able to get to know the family. And set up the filter for them. Show them how it works. And even think some. And finally, taught them how to maintain it. Showing them Jesus' compassion. And sharing with them his grace, love, hope, forgiveness, and how we can have assurance and salvation. So why do we go? To make his name the loudest. And to provide help for today, hope for tomorrow. Not to point to us, but to point solely to Him. So my prayer is, as Jamie comes and leads us into a time of invitation, perhaps God's been dealing in your heart to go. Maybe God's been dealing in your heart to go across the street. Maybe God's been dealing in your heart to go to the person that might have a locker next to yours. Maybe God's calling you to go in your school or your workplace or maybe to your friend or your neighbor or a family member. Or maybe God is calling you to go out on missions in your community or maybe to another state or maybe even to another country. Wherever God is calling you to go, I pray you'll be obedient to it, that you will surrender to it and be willing to go where He wants you to go, even if it means beginning your trip in Guatemala and changing it to a completely different place. Trusting in the Lord to guide your footsteps. And I pray if you've never made a decision to surrender to Jesus Christ, know that just like the filter is the only way that can purify that water, just like that, Jesus is the only way that can, the only one that can cleanse us of our sin. So I invite you to surrender your life to Him. If you would, Stand with me as we pray together. And I invite you to respond at the altar as the Lord leads you to. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Follow Jesus, no turning back, no turning back. The world behind me, the cross before me, the world behind me, the cross before me. cross before me, no turning back, no turning back, 
this place and go make his name the loudest. Amen. Let us go on mission for Christ, sharing and trusting in him and the Holy Spirit to do his work. Let us go together in the name of Christ. Amen. Amen. I invite you to come back tonight. Join us for our Concord Cinema, The End of the Spear. Uh, it's a powerful, moving movie. Uh, you won't want to miss it. Uh, and I invite you to bow your heads with me this morning and pray as we close out from this morning. God, we thank you so much for this day. I thank you, Lord, for uh, bringing us into this place. Thank you for the team who's been able to share about how, God, you moved in a mighty way. Lord, thank you for this church that you sent us on mission for you. In your name, in their name, God, and um, I just thank you that we had the opportunity to go and make your name known to the people of El Salvador. God, I pray for the seeds that were spread I pray, Lord, that they would grow in us and also grow in those that heard the message of the gospel. I pray, Lord, that you would just help us to have a, a good afternoon. And, Lord, as we go out, may we be a people that are making your name the loudest. God, may we be a people that are declaring uh, you as Lord and Savior. God, may we share the message of Jesus Christ to every person we meet. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. As you're dismissed today, we again, thank you for being faithful givers. And I know there's some...